views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. the Bronx Buzz. This is Bronx Nets program where we talk to writers and editors and photographers and journalists and filmmakers and just about anybody uh, who's putting stuff out. This is a very special show and I've really been looking forward to it because I'm bringing on my friends and my colleagues who are on Bronx that they're all talk show hosts, they're all reporters, they're all journalists and in most cases been doing it for a very long time. The real question was, was there enough time in the day to get everybody in because we can all talk. Uh, Bob Lee, the host of Open on Monday and of course uh, of fame, the WBLS. Uh, nice to have you with us, Bob. Nice to be Say here. Hello, yes, hello okay. how you doing? And Bob does Open on Mondays. And then we go one more day and uh, Sanji Lopez is there for Tuesdays on Open. Hey, okay. Gary. Sanji, nice to see you. And um, let's see, uh, Open on Fridays is... Um, Cafe Con Leche, it's Rena Valentin. Hello, Rena. Hi, Gary, very well done, Cafe Con Leche. <laughs> well, you know, you do it better than I do, but that's who you are, so that's the way to uh, introduce you. <laughs> and um, um, all my good, I would just say my good friend, they're all my good friends, Javier E. Gomez is uh, the host of Diálogo Abierto. Uh, nice to have you with us, Javier. Thank you, Gary, for uh, having this uh, awesome reunion so we can catch up with each other during this pandemic. It's, it's a little bit crazy, and, I, and I'll fill everybody in. We know each other for years. We, in essence, have worked together. Maybe we get together at, at the Christmas party or something like that. But the only times I ever really see them is like Bob is finishing his edition of Open, and I'm coming in, down, you know, walking down the ramp at Lehman College, and we pass each other, and they say, oh, hey, Bob, what's up? How's the family? What's going on? Everything's good. How's the show? And he says the same to me. It happens with each one of them. So this is a chance for us to be together. So I'm going to, I'm, I'm not play host. I am the host of the Bronx Buzz. And so I'm going to start it this way. I'm going to tell a little anecdote. The transition from being in the studio to coming in here was difficult at first because I forgot to prepare. You know, my routine was set. You put on your tie, you get everything together, you get in your car, you think about the show, you have your notes, you get to the studio, you talk to the producer. And in here, it's like, ah, I'm just going to the bedroom. Uh, you know, I'll be all right. Uh, and so I had to remind myself after the first couple of shows, I said, what's wrong with me? And I said, because I'm not preparing. So, Bob, let's start with you. Um, was the transition a, diff a difficult one? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, we do radio and TV from here, but the, <laughs> the first time we did it, we were trying to get all the technicalities together. And we were on with the Bronx Net uh, technicians, and we tried to go this way and go that way. Let's try this. Let's try that. And uh, sometimes you forget to turn off the mic if you put it up or something like that. Or, yeah, you, know, you, or you stand up. <laughs> yeah, right, right. You're in your bedroom. You know, yeah. So when you shoot, uh, I'm shooting in my son who's now older and left the house. He, we had an empty bedroom, so we set it up in here. Where do you shoot, Bob? I'm in my, uh, my personal studio. Personal yeah. studio because you do your WBLS and other things there. Yeah. Sanjay, uh, where do you shoot from? I'm shooting in my home studio in my room, in my bedroom. So <laughs> it's right. really tight space and I live with my family so it can be <laughs> because of that. My dog is always barking. <laughs> do, do you have a hard time getting them all to be quiet? I make sure that there's nobody around in the house when, I, when, when Gary's doing TV, you got to be out. Yeah, you know, I had to alert them ahead of time. So maybe 20 minutes before the interview, I'm like, everyone, please pipe down for at least an hour or so. And, you know, they're pretty, they're pretty good with that. So. Oh, my gosh, the dogs listen like that? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not my dog. <laughs> I, I'll, give you, I'll give you two things. Number one, the Wi-Fi is a big deal because if somebody's streaming something on TV, all of a sudden, you know, I'm, I'm breaking up. Uh, and, and then uh, the other thing is, um, you, you know, the, the amount of noise, even a guest. I had a guest the other day and she had birds. Exactly. <laughs> birds. exactly. I'm like, where are we out in the forest or something? Um, uh, Javier, where are, you, um, where are you shooting from? Uh, 
in recent weeks, I'm shooting from my living room. I started in my kitchen, but I have been using a very small personal office that I rent a couple of blocks down my house. So, uh, and uh, Rena, where you shoot, um, uh, Rena, uh, and, and uh, who is it? Uh, Javier said something interesting about Rena's set. But go ahead, Rena, I know you're dying to talk. <laughs> <laughs> Come no. on, let us have it, baby. <laughs> so I am shooting from what has been renamed Chari Executive Suite. <laughs> <laughs> I did, I renamed it Chari Executive Suite once we went under quarantine because I actually have the space look a certain way during the week and I transform it on the weekend so that I can feel we're in a different space. However, this is like my, my work area slash living room area slash studio slash eating area, you know. It's, All it's the above. I love to see your daughter right in the background, Rena. <laughs> You, I oh, love to you, see your daughter in the background when you're doing the show. When she's working um, out remotely, right? She's working. Uh, <laughs> Javier, That's why it's called Javier, Chari you, Executive Suite. You know what Chari uh, is? No. Sorry, Gary. <laughs> That's okay. I, I knew you had something to say. Uh, I, I, but I wanted to say Javier <laughs> said before the show when we gathered that you made some comments about Rena's set. So why don't you reissue those comments? And then I'm gonna ask that same question to the others, go ahead. I think uh, the pandemic caught uh, some of us at a little bit of guard in terms of the technologies of working from remote. So we started doing very, very uh, rudimentary uh, settings. And in Reina's case, I started in my kitchen. In Reina's uh, case, she started in, in her suite and off camera, I was telling her that week after week after week, I saw the gradual improvement in the setup, in the lighting, in the sound. And now she has an elaborate set filled with colors and with life, and it's a huge progression. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, Rena, um, has it, let, let's start, because I, I asked Bob the question, but Rena, has it been, um, w was it an interesting transition to do the job of hosting Open on Fridays from your home, or was it just uh, effortless? Well, the diva in me has issues having to be the technician as well. However, I've acclimated, okay? <laughs> um, yes, I must share it that way because it's like I have the iPad, the phone, the laptop, and I'm like pressing buttons simultaneously while I'm trying to keep track of my guest conversation. So, and in addition to that, I've become a set designer, as Javier mentioned. Answer. You got to answer the question. Was it a I difficult did. transition? Was it a difficult transition or was it like, hey, just another day? In, in no, you know what, Gary? Like, it, everything is a matter of perspective, right? And so we were placed in, uh, in, in a situation where we had no choice. It was flight or fight, right? And so um, in the, the I, I want to say the rapid way in which we had to convert and just adapt. I had no choice but to just kind of make do with what I have. So while we can say, yes, it wasn't exactly an easy transition, I basically made it an adventure because, you, you know, know, yeah. You know, you know what, Rena, to me, that's a Bronx story. I mean, we all will agree this is a Bronx girl and that's how we deal with Everything that comes down the pipe. Um, Sanji, same question for you. Well, now you, you are the newest host. I mean, let's face it, you didn't host a lot of other programs. You hosted some in the studio uh, on Tuesdays uh, at, at Bronxnet, or did you really begin doing this through this process? Um, so I've, I've hosted sometimes when Darren was out, I would take over open Wednesdays every now and then, but I'm the newest host here and I've had a pleasure of learning from every single one of you from seeing you work at the studio. So um, thank you for being mentors when I would work at the studio in the background. Um, I'm a reporter and producer at Bronxnet, so this has been new for me. Um, and I guess the transition working from home since I haven't hosted at the studio often has been okay. It hasn't, it hasn't been too challenging. There goes my dog again. <laughs> but so, so it's been a little bit challenging. But Open Tuesday, just to give a little background, um, Michael Max Nobby actually um, told us to start um, producing this show because COVID nineteen was bringing in so much news rapidly, and we need. He he said he thought we needed another edition of Open. So 
the show that I host is mostly, it, it covers youth and a lot of um, community um, initiatives, grassroots efforts, things of that sort. And I appreciate everyone here because we all have a different angle with the shows. And, and I really enjoy watching every single one of you. Um, you work are, you are the best. Sanji, thank you. Javier, now for you, same thing. I mean, you many years, Dialogo has been around for a long time. You hosted, I guess, at the Lehman Studios, at the Mercy Studios. And now you're, well, let's say you started in the kitchen and now you're in the living room. Has it been a different? <laughs> <laughs> it was a very uh, interesting uh, period to adapt. Uh, a lot of things have worked beautifully. For example, working from remote, has allowed us to bring in guests that normally couldn't make it into the studio because of commute. Now we have uh, had them on the show. It's very easy for them to do it. Um, also, uh, I like a lot the collaborative dynamic that has uh, come up during the pandemic, for example, with Sonny. Sonny has contributed great news packages for Dialogo that she reports in English and Spanish. And also there's been constant communication uh, between producers in terms of uh, referring guests uh, who can speak X languages or who can have different approaches. And also, <clears throat> I see all of us working together more closely with the marketing uh, unit as well in, in getting the word out, in telling audiences, listen, uh, it's a lot going on, but we are here, we are here for you. I, th I think, you know, p folks may not have been able to see, but each one of us was nodding yes to many of the things that you said. So there has definitely been an advantage. You know, you used to call a guest, are you available? Then they'd have to get there and you have to get them parking. I mean, we all know what we've done. Um, but now it's like, uh, like us, they can just, you know, like Sanji gets out of bed and goes on TV. Uh, <laughs> um, Bob, let's get back to you. Um, you have been on the air as a personality in all different places for a long, long time. We're not going to count how many years it is. Um, in terms of content, this is, it's good for a news person and journalist to have something to play off all the time. Um, what's it been like and have you had guests who really moved you or presented something interesting uh, through this uh, difficult time for everybody in the box? Well, you know, they always say content, content, content. So it's a, it's a wonderful thing to have as much content as you can, and then you can decide what's most important. Um, but I'm a community guy, and I like to be out in the community, and I do a lot of reporting from the community. So it's really been like, oh, I can't wait to get back out there. Yeah, so but, let me just say, for what Javier said, <clears throat> I agree with, but on the other side, and I certainly agree with that. I mean, we, you know, we get out the BX. That's where we go. Yeah. That's what we do. <laughs> yeah. So go ahead, finish so, what you can say. So yeah, I mean, we we get a chance to. It's like Skype now. You know, I, we always wanted to Skype in people that couldn't make it all the way into the studios, mm -hmm. like somebody from California, from Europe, London. You know, um, but we can do that now. Um, mm -hmm. But I I, I got to tell you, you know, I, I've interviewed some of the best people that, you know, a lot of us met or saw on TV or heard on radio. And uh, they came on, you know, and, 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 ex and shared some of their experiences. Like, what were you doing during the time of quarantine? And, for instance, we spoke to uh, Dr. Jeff Gordier. He's a clinical psychologist. And people are suffering right now, you know. And if you're not suffering now, it'll come up on you later on, and you'll find out that, wow, I have TPSD, and I, I, how did I get this? And yeah. You, you, all those and, things would come back, and this is how you got it. So Jeff and, was trying to decipher some of that stuff. And, and I, I happen to know him, and he's a, a tremendously oh, knowledgeable and you know, knows a lot about life. And, and I'll agree with you, Bob, that we, were, we are able to get further into people's lives, I think, than we do. Um, Rena, what about for you? Best best interview that you did or most uh, compelling? Oh, my gosh. Are you asking me to choose? I mean, I want to say, I know, he's like, I, I, but I do want to share the same uh, sentiment that, that Bob brought in, and that is that I've had the distinct honor of being able to interview people from Hawaii, from Puerto Rico, um, from California. I've had interviews that are in other parts of the world that are loaning themselves to the similarities we're going through. So it's been really fascinating to see all of us on a worldwide level 
go yeah. through the same pandemic in a different way. And so I want to say, while we represent the arts, culture, and uh, entertainment, uh, we have been able to share that voice through mind, body, and spirit. Mm -hmm. um, we and, and, and all over the world. Yeah, you know, you know, it really is fascinating because, yeah, you could call a friend that you have, let's say, in Puerto Rico and, uh, you know, all right, so you do it on, in the studio, it doesn't look as great. There's no way you could say to somebody from Hawaii, hey, you want to stop into the Lehman College studios? And it's really broadened our base, right? Yeah, and the Hawaii thing was Ayurveda, you know, and Ayurveda is a means of, of holistic uh uh, well-being, right? And so it's been interesting how we've pivoted in our content to accommodate the circumstances, which is how do we get through this together? Right. And, and that brings, uh, you know, maybe an idea for somebody in the Bronx, uh, something we would never have gotten a perspective. Yeah. Sanji, for you, uh, most interesting, most compelling, uh, give us something about that. I agree with everyone's sentiments. We're going from BronxNet to the world with these shows. Um, but my favorite interview so far was with a Bronx doctor, um, Dr. Vanessa Farrell. Um, she wrote a piece titled um, Structural Violence, COVID-19 in the Bronx. And she joined us to break down the disproportionate impact of COVID-19 on the Bronx and how it ties into racial, social, and health inequalities. Um, we're talking about policies that affect Black and Brown folks, such as yeah. Um, the lack of resources, redlining, food insecurity, environmental racism, all of these things, gentrification. So that was definitely one of my favorites on the show. Wow. And, and, you know, and you know what, yeah. uh, for all the things everybody's saying, I'm seeing that all the hosts agree, but every one of us without question have dealt with the disparity question, have dealt with the, you know, the inequality question, have dealt with, you know, I, I, with the Bronx, I mean, that, the BXRX, and, and we should mention that, that uh, Michael Matz and the powers that be uh, extended the, uh, the, the framework of open instead of just open, it's BXRX uh, open. So anyway, uh, Javier, for you, um, and by the way, normally I'm usually Mr. and Ms. for all of my guests, I'm always very formal. But with you guys, Javier, what do you got? <laughs> uh, <laughs> what, what, what's, what's your, uh, uh, something that really stands out? Uh, and then I want you to ask me the same thing, because I have some ideas on that, too. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, two things stand out to me. Um, talking about uh, the pandemic allowing us to expand our outreach with both audiences and guests, we uh, have had a recurring guest at Dialogo since the pandemic started. Her name is Marielena Botazzi, and she's one of the world's lead vaccine developers. So if we were going through the regular studio, we would have never had a chance to really interview her. And she's become one of our regular spokespersons and she's constantly updating us. She, one of, her vaccine is one of the 10 vaccines that have the lead in the research process. Uh, she's from the Beller um, College in Texas. And that always stands out as a highlight that makes me very proud and also still remaining very accessible to local communities. Like when I got a private email from a young lady saying, my grandmother is in a nursing home, they are dying, please help, please help us get the word out. And we, we did a segment about it. And that accessibility, that hyper local sense of responsibility was very special to me. Yeah. You know, I can really, go ahead, Bob, what were you gonna say? So, you know, just to bounce off of that, you know, we interviewed a, a young man who was living with the COVID-19 <laughs> Uh, and he was trying to, you can hear it, you, we interviewed him, and Helen was the producer, and you can hear it in his lungs you, and, in his, and in his voice. You can hear that he had a problem. But he wanted to come on and share his experience and, and also mention that he was writing music about it, you know. He's continuing yeah, this, his, his this talent is, while living with this it. This is definitely... This is definitely the kind of thing that you, we couldn't do. And this gives us a chance to, um, uh, to do stuff like that. So uh, who's going to ask me the same question? Well, what about you, Gary? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm prodding my guests. So for me, what really was a challenge was, do, was moderating political debates. And number one, the easier part was, was of course, bringing people in and, and elected officials and others don't always have schedules that, you know, and that's a big coordination. But to moderate a debate and try and get that balance of, you know, me moderating a question or having the guests respond with the technology was really a challenge. And then, and in a room, I can manage that because I can see people's faces. I can kind of interrupt or, 
you know, you, you've got a limited amount of time and everybody's supposed to get equal time. But it was definitely, and I moderated, what, four or five of them. It was definitely a challenge. And of course, the biggest one, which nobody could handle, was the 12 guests or 10 guests we had in the 15th congressional district. Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking at a screen now, a Zoom screen with everybody. I had 12 people on there and I had to figure out how to get each one equal time. We lit- I literally went to a, uh, a math uh, genius who created a, 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 you know, a little a rubric for me to be able to ask that. So that was really the biggest challenge. But the advantage is what you guys have said, bringing people on here uh, who you, know, you normally wouldn't necessarily be able to have access to or put together or all uh, those kinds of things. Um, and, and now just a general question. We'll even start with you, Sanji. How do you see um, the Bronx now moving forward? New York has obviously done better than just about anywhere in the world, really. Um, but we're not going to take anything for granted. And, and how do you see your role and what, do you, what, what is it like on your mind saying, gee, if I could do this on uh, open, um, you know, every Tuesday, this is what I'd like to do. So what do you thought? And then we're going to go around the room again and ask everybody the same thing. Well, Gary, as you stated, I'm still reporting on the field during COVID-19. So I see a lot of community-led initiatives. I see a lot of grassroots efforts happening here in our borough. And I see the Bronx really coming together even more, even if we're far apart at this time. So honestly, that's that's where I see it going. And, you know, I, was that the question? Did I answer your question? No, no, that was the question. I was just going to follow that up with, um, is it a challenge to go about? Do you want to keep yourself safe? Uh, you, you, I'm presuming you're working with a crew member of some sort, <coughs> so you have a camera person. You want to get close, as Bob said, we all go into the communities. Has it been a bit of a challenge or do you feel kind of comfortable doing it? Absolutely. It's been a challenge. You know, we have to remain six feet of distance. We have to wear masks out on the field. Um, so I usually pass the mic off to the to the interviewee, wipe the mic off in order to make sure that everything is sanitized. Um, and now I'm actually going out on my own. I have my own equipment, my camera. Michael Max Nobby came by and dropped off a task cam for recording. So, you know, it's it's been a bit of a challenge, but we're going forward because the community needs Bronx Net on the field as well. To, to, to talk about Bronx heroes, I mean, here we go. Sanji's out there making sure that we do yeah. it. And, and Rena, I'm going I'm to pivot off that. Um, I get the sense, and, and it's what I said to you before about being a Bronx girl, the people of the Bronx, we've, we've had it the worst. We, we knew it was coming. We know what's going on here. People <clears throat> of the Bronx have some, something going on. We, it's like there's real energy. All the people I talk to, like, we're just going to, you know, that kind of thing. What, what do you think, Rena? So, um, what's interesting is, as I, I mentioned before, uh, and uh, Bron- uh, Open BronxNet or BXRX kind of now incorporates uh, other aspects of the Bronx, right? And Friday, while we geared it mostly towards arts and culture and anything related to the arts, and it's, it's been my absolute honor to serve as a platform and as a voice for the artists who need to be heard and need to be seen as well. And uh, Can I applaud? I'm sorry. I got to applaud for that. No, it's tremendous. And Rena, I believe in all of this, that it's the Bronx's arts and culture and our understanding of that that's ultimately going to win because we could fight the politics and we could fight the economics, but it's all those musicians and artists and creative dance. You know, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I, I'm just but motivated. you're right. They're always open and ready to be on our open artist spotlight, and they serve as therapists for everybody else, right? They, it, while it's therapy for them, it's therapy for us too. So we're all healing together. And so, yep. with regards to this particular rendition of Open BXRX, the one thing that shook us up for Friday is we now have elected officials coming on uh, more regularly because we also want to make sure that our audience is ke- being kept informed. So, yep. um, it, it's been a, a nice, interesting in- insertion of, of Bob, having politicians Bob, come up and, and, and speak as well. Bob Lee's at the edge of his seat and he's ready to pop in. Go to it, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, you know, we have all those wonderful people and we're sharing lots of great information, creating the awareness for our communities. But we have to continue to tell people to stay apart so that we can come together, continue to wear your mask, continue to wash your hands, continue with uh, the social distancing and all that. You know, they're shutting places down and giving them fines for having people congregate too much in front of their places. A lot of uh, in, in Queens and 
places in the Bronx. They will give you a fine, and then it will take your liquor license away for about two weeks. And then mm -hmm. if you try to grab them, and sometimes the owner, the restaurant owner, has nothing to do, he has something to do with it, but sometimes he can't help it. You know, there's a, a, a nice layout outside that they didn't have before, and it looks good, it's appealing, and people are dying to get out. Well, people want to get out, and they just, Pile up there. They congregate there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a Bronx, a plain Bronx phrase. Don't be stupid. <laughs> it's like, and I think, and I agree with you, Bob, it's partly yeah. our responsibility to push that. You know, the real question for the restaurant owners is, you know, if somebody gets angry about the mask thing, then, you know, are they responsible? I mean, they're not officers or security personnel. Yeah. And that's been one of the questions, you know, we're asking businesses to do it. And I want to just yeah. add one more thing, and then Javier is going to weigh in on this too. But they want to do business. They want to do business. I, I, who wouldn't? I mean, you know, yeah. we're all for that. Um, I think that it's been a positive thing. All the strips in the Bronx where there are restaurants, and now they're outdoors. Great timing. Summer in the Bronx. Have a little margarita sitting outside. <laughs> you know, and, and it's really inspired. I hope it's going to inspire kind of a new way of being. It, and listen, I, I do drive a car. It's taking cars off the street. It is. And all that it is. is positive for the Bronx. Positive for the Bronx. Javier, what, what's your thought about uh, where we're at and the kind of, you know, all of these issues we're talking about? Um, I think we are starting to see recovery. The resilience of the people of the Bronx, the resilience of New York City is showing loud and clear. But there are still many challenges ahead, and that's where the responsibility for us uh, lies. So many stories to tell of success, of resilience, but also of tragedy, also issues that need to be fixed. I think the COVID-19 pandemic has caused like a, like a major, possibly a catharsis, for lack of a better word in the English language, in humanity. And people are questioning a lot of things, uh, social justice, racial justice. Um, business, economic justice, and all these issues are here for us. And, and now f the method and the purpose of our work remains the same, meaning the mission, but the, the method, the mechanics of doing our work has, have changed. Yeah, well, maybe, maybe we can make a regular thing of it as, as things go on. Uh, Bob Lee open uh, BX, uh, BXRX open on Mondays. Sanji Lopez BXRX uh, open on Tuesdays. Uh, Rena Valentin, BXRX open on Fridays, and yes. uh, Javier Gomez, Dialogo Alberto. And then, uh, when, when is your main time? Like, when, when do people see Dialogo? Real quick. Dialogo airs on uh, Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m., and then it reruns throughout the week. We have a new right. uh, channel. I think the new channel is 69, the multicultural channel. Oh, so they put you on there. That makes a lot of sense. Listen. Um, let's go. Let's go Bronx. And uh, thank you all so much for joining us and giving us a very special, and go Bronx net. Uh, we, you know, really the place that we work for. And yes, we applaud Bronx net. Bronx net for yeah. allowing us to be and serve our community. Can't wait to get back Bye, to see the floor manager and everybody else. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> keep, keep watching 67 through 70 and what is it? Uh, 33 through the others. Bye.